Okay, so we was going to talk today just briefly about how to navigate living in the United States, being Muslim, and the holiday season, right? Which is what we're in right now. In a few days, it'll be Christmas. What are we going to do? For a lot of us, a lot of us who our families or some of our families, some for some people, they may be the only Muslim in their family. And I always tell brothers and sisters, if you're the only Muslim in your family, get married and have kids. There's going to be a lot of y'all. You're going to tilt the balance. If it's just you, it's going to be a problem. It's like you versus the world. You start having kids, they're going to be on their daddy and their mama side. They're going to be like, Granny, you tripping. Every year. And, you know, over the years, I done mellowed out a lot when it comes to holidays. I still, I never say Merry Christmas, though. Still to this day. I'm like, why would I say that? I don't have to say that. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like Wild Lake. Somebody says, Merry Christmas to me. I'll be like, Wild Lake. It's a hadith of the prophet, alayhi salat wa salam, where some Yahudis, they said, some alaykum, some is like venom. So it's almost like you're saying salam, but you're being slick. They say, Summer Lake him. And he just say, Walek. So whatever you wishing on to me, back to you. That's old school. We was young, we would say, back to you. That's like saying, Walek. So if somebody says to me, Merry Christmas, I say, you too. If you trying to, you know, you want something good for me, a lot of times, and this is what I, as, as I got older, I come to realize, when people say these things, sometimes it's just they're saying it just culturally. They know it's the time of the year. They see you with your family. They say, Caesar's greetings, or, happy holidays, or Merry Christmas to you, especially they see you with the little ones. Merry Christmas to you and the kids. I used to get offended. So I'm like, what you talking about? Christmas is a pagan holiday. You know, like, if you know the history of Christmas, you'll know that it doesn't really have nothing to do with the prophet Isa, alayhi salatu wa salam. It has to do with other things that were in the Roman lands when they was pagans. And they Christianized those holidays, right? So I know that. I'm pretty sure. I know Brother Malik know that. We came up the same way. You know what I'm saying? Jeremiah 10. What's Jeremiah 10 talk about? Jeremiah 10. Come up here with the same in the mic, man. They can't hear you. <laughs> Yeah, he was talking about Jeremiah 10, verse 4 to 6 in the Bible. Can you, can you hear me? It's not on? I don't know. First of all, Thank you, sir. How everybody doing? Yeah, but what he was speaking about, um, because it was wintertime too, it was very cold, and they kind of bored, didn't have nothing to do, so... So in Jeremiah 10, verse 46, it talks about those that go into the woods and chop down trees and decorate them with silver and gold and prop them up. Call them heathens. So it's like, it's paganism. So yeah, me and him grew up like that. And I used to get offended too because like, even when somebody say happy birthday, I would say happy born day. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> 
<laughs> so that was like that used to be our cook bombs, right? Christmas time come. We would quote Jeremiah 10 in the Bible. Woe be to those who go cut down the tree and decorate it with silver and gold and prop it up. They ain't nothing but heathens, right? That was like us. We would say that to our family, like, you a heathen. I don't think that was like the best downward technique, right? Now that I'm older, my grandma, I mean, my mom, who's my kid's grandma, she'll say, send the kids up. I'm like, why you want them to come up? It's like a week before Christmas. I'm not dumb. But see my mama though, right? What, what can I do? So I tell my daughter, I say, if she say that she wants you to decorate the tree, say you'll decorate the tree if she repeats after you, La ilaha illallah. <laughs> say, okay, Granny, I'm going to help you decorate the tree. But first you say, La ilaha illallah. To me, that's a good trade off. Know what I'm saying? I don't know what happens. The tree gets decorated. Know what I'm saying? As far as I'm concerned, I'm like, hey, man, my mom just takes it high every Christmas. <laughs> But the one thing, a lot of what I'm saying is just to create a little bit of levity. One of the things that can be tense is because how do we navigate being the other, being in the minority, and still having a sense of dignity about ourselves? It might be easy for me. As an adult, be like, I don't need Christmas. I don't need Kwanzaa. I don't need all of that. I got Alana's messenger. But with our kids, our kids a lot of times is like, everybody having a good time but us. This whole religion just is about no. No, I can't do this. No, I can't do that. So as parents and older siblings, what do we do to help our families navigate the holiday season? And one of the main things that we could do, which in the past, my parents didn't do that well, my dad, for him, you know, we fast Ramadan, and then Ramadan was over. We didn't do a whole lot of celebrating because he was like that first generation of people practicing Islam. Before him, we thought Ramadan was in December every year. So he was in that first generation and started getting it right. But they didn't, you know, they was like, we gonna fast. Gonna wake the kids up, make them all read the Holy Quran, which is beautiful. One of my main memories of being a kid is after Fajr, sitting in a circle, all of the kids and my dad and my stepmom reciting the Jews of Quran every day. Right? That was like big. But at the end of that, I didn't get like no toys. So then when Christmas would come, I'd be riding my friend bike. Y'all yeah, don't celebrate Christmas. Can I ride your bike? <laughs> I don't celebrate Christmas. Can I use your skateboard? I don't celebrate Christmas. So it's almost like you become an orphan for all holidays when you're Muslim. And so the way we can navigate this so it doesn't happen is that we have to big up the Muslim celebrations. So when the Eids come, they got to be big. I know it's traditional in a lot of the Muslim world. The Eid is almost like a family gathering. You go to the prayer. You go visit family. 
and then you go maybe to the cemetery. That works when you're in a place that don't have Christmas. But when you come to the United States, a lot of Muslims don't have families to visit. I mean, we got families to visit, but they're not Muslims. So they like, why are you coming over here on Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, we gonna make sure that this Eid is a big celebration. So we're going to rent out a hall. We're going to get toys for the kids. We're going to have those jumpy houses. We're going to have food so that the kids look forward every year. They used to have, we used to have at our Eid in Oakland, they had this guy, he was called the Animal Guy. I don't even know his real name. He come every year, he got all these snakes. And I remember, I remember my daughter, Running every year to see the animal guy. She's like 22 now. I remember when she was like 15, I said, you going to see the animal guy? She was like, man, he got the same stuff. <laughs> but that stuff worked. Because it's like you only see it twice a year. But once she got old enough, she said, man, that's them, them same animals. I like not. Some of them done died. He, got, he done replaced a couple of them. But in her mind, as a kid, she was looking forward to having a good time. The main way that we navigate these things is by giving people an alternative. We can tell people Christmas tree is paganism. They don't care about that. They like, I care about the presence that's under that joint more than the tree itself. So we just say, hey, we give our presents too. And not just Muslim presents. I said this in Juma. Y'all might have caught it. But sometimes, E come, you're going to get the same Muslim stuff. I'm like, I want a new iPhone for E. I remember one time my wife, she said to me, she said, you want the new iPhone? I said, alhamdulillah. <laughs> That was a long time ago. This is like the iPhone 6. <laughs> I seen a commercial for iPhone 14. I called my wife. I was like, you know E coming up. <laughs> we like three months away, man. Start putting it away. I don't want, I don't want like the dicker bees no more. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the, the Egyptian months. I'm not saying. All of that stuff is great. Like, if you barely know me and you give me some Egypt and Musk, humbly love. But if you and my family, man, I'm going to be like, dude, you pay $20. <laughs> One of the things about navigating the holidays, we have to be less combative to our Christian brothers and sisters. Because they just trying to have a good time, man. They just trying to spend time with the family. This is their Eid. And every people have their Eids. So we're not trying to put our Eid on them. And they're not trying to put their Eid on us. They might give us a gift. They're not saying if you get, if you take this gift, that means you worship Jesus. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, you mean something in my life. You're a friend of mine. You're a loved one. I'm giving you this because I feel something for you. We can throw it back in their face. Ah, that's some Christmas stuff. And you worship shirt. But after we say all that, they still going to worship Jesus. If they Christians, the better way to open up dialogue with people is be nice to people. Allah in the Holy Quran, he says, you'll find the closest to you in love are those who call themselves Christians. Imam Suyuti, Rahimahullah, he said, this ayat is talking about 
the Africans. He said, this Ayak, Imam Sayyuti never came to the United States. They didn't even have a United States. Think about how many Africans done converted to Islam from Christianity in the United States. This is God telling us that we have a whole group of people that if we treat them good, they already at the precipice. Well, I talked to Christians and not just African American ones, a lot of people who used to be Christian. And they say, man, I would go to church and I just couldn't believe that Jesus was God. This is what they say. I hear people who not Muslims say that. Say, man, when I used to go to church, I just couldn't believe. Like the message was good, but when they would say that Jesus was God, it just, I just couldn't believe it. Has anybody else heard that? Anybody else heard? Alhamdulillah, I don't want people to think I'm tripping. You know what I'm saying? People say that. They like, I used to go to church, but I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it that Jesus was God because he ain't. It goes against their fitra to believe that a man is God. But if we just fighting and arguing with them, they not going to listen to us either. A lot of times we should just take it easy, be nice to people, say things that are lawful. You say happy holidays. They don't know what you're talking about. I say happy holiday. I mean Eve or Friday. They mean Christmas or Hanukkah. To each his own. Lakum dinakum, waliyadin. But that's better than me getting into an argument, getting into a fight. I know that the rituals that they have is steeped in paganism. But it's not Islam, so it don't matter. It don't matter if it was actually Jesus' birthday and it didn't have all of the other stuff. It's still, it's not Islam. So, for them, it's just a fest, the most festive day of the year. And so, alhamdulillah, they can have that. Do we participate in it? If somebody gives me a gift, me personally, I take it. Especially if they got that new iPhone. I'm going to be like a low egg bar. I'm not going to necessarily buy somebody a gift on Christmas. But if something like my mom, I buy her gifts all the time. So when Christmas comes around, she don't mind not getting nothing. But come to the thing tonight about the thing, maybe we get on takes you how to. So he uh, don't bring both them wives though. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't want no fights to break out in the prayer room, inshallah. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Do we got any questions about any questions about anything I said or comments or anything else? Sister Rahim. I'm around Christians all day, every day. I accept their gifts also. Uh, I heard in Haji, and then the Haji is that that not, first of all, Asalaam. Well, it was that. You are offending the giver. Alhamdulillah. So the sister said that she's around Christians. Sister Rahima, old school, says he know 
about all of it, all of the Muslim secrets and open. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she said when she's given gifts, she accepts them because she does it. She believes it's un-Islamic to offend the giver. And I know that the Prophet Sallam, he said, give gifts and spread love. Give gifts and spread love. So we want to be gift giving people and we want to accept gifts. There may be, and it's for everybody, it's going to be different. Some people are going to be like, look, man, I don't want to take no gift on Christmas because that's a bunch of shirt behind the gift. So if somebody, if that's what they want to say, humbly love. Somebody else says, I want to take the gift because I don't want, I done turned down so many gifts in my life from people, man, on Christmas. And, and it ain't not one person who I turn a gift down ever that became Muslim. So I'm not saying they didn't become Muslim because I didn't take their gift. But I know for a fact that that didn't help them become Muslim because none of them people would become Muslim. And I would go out my way sometimes to be polite. Oh, you know, I'm Muslim, this and this and that. They just like, dude, I'm trying to give you something because I got love for you. And you're throwing it back in my face. You know what I'm saying? The only people who love Muslims are our bosses because we work all of the holidays. <laughs> I seen a couple of hands. I think it was a brother's hand right there, and then it's a sister. Go ahead, brother. Thank you, son. Okay, so, um, as a single father, my daughter came to live with me last year, so this will be her first Christmas, with, you know, with no tree and presents and stuff. However, she asked for some money today, and you know, she took my credit card and used it for home, whatever. But uh, as a parent, I got brought her to too, because she's over there at the coffee shop. But as a parent, like, you know, it's how do we. I guess guide them for next year. Because I had a conversation with them, I text her and said, Does this affect me? And I think you mentioned earlier, she goes, No, I just want some money. It's not okay. So we came up with a name for it. So, you know, instead of saying Merry Christmas, she says, uh, Merry Honey. One more time? She says, Merry Honey. We, we came up with a name yeah. for it. Name, yeah, so she calls we we call it American Holiday rather than American Christmas. However, today she's going to her mom's house in Stockton to visit, and she's going to be exposed to all that. Um, how do I navigate it for next year? Because again, like you know, as a parent, you know, I'm like I, I catch myself like in front of like force on her, but then I, I, I fall back. You know, like she was here earlier, and then she's like, "Go here," and I'm like, "Go here," and she's like, "No, go here." Like, okay, that's yeah, cool, you know. Um, but I'm the only Muslim in my family as well, too. Yeah. Like, it took my parents years, you know, to, to, to accept it. But now, like, my dad, like, they, they, thought, like, they thought that I didn't even know me. So for long, for years, like, for like five, last five years, seven years, they've been making me grills with no meat. <laughs> and then one day I went there, I was like, I like chicken, too, you know? <laughs> I just explained to them, and then they see the difference that changed in life. So um, now I think we got more of this, but how do I navigate for next year? Uh, so I mean, I think it's more like a, a a long plan. Like I think what you're saying, like when it comes to our children, you know, one of my parents was Muslim, one of my parents wasn't. So I knew how to get over to you know all of my non-Muslim relatives around Christmas because I knew that they would hook me up. Know what I'm saying? It wasn't that I was saying, but I accept that lifestyle. And my mom told me that one time. My mom, she took my nephew to church. This was years ago. So I get upset. I'm like, man, what you taking him to church for? Muslim. Got to give that stuff up. She was like, I always took you to church. It ain't work on you. <laughs> And so that made me mellow out a little bit. Like, you know, definitely your daughter, she's in a space where 
everybody who she knows, they're celebrating. So, you know, if she, at one point in her life, every human being, no matter who we are, we don't have to make a decision on how we want to live our life. We want to dedicate our life to following Allah's messenger, or do we want to do something else? Inshallah, your daughter, she got many years to make that decision. The best things you can do is just be a good, loving father. Let her have some space. You could be real strict on folks. That strict stuff in America don't work because they could call CPS. <laughs> we come from other countries, man. You, you do whatever you want with the kids. But in America, kids don't call child abuse. Be like, this. my dad ain't letting me celebrate Christmas. It's going to be a whole thing. They're going to be like, and he's Muslim? You're going to be like on the news. You know what I'm saying? So I would just take my time. I would let her know I don't celebrate Christmas. So if I give you something, it ain't got nothing to do with it being Christmas. You know what I'm saying? Now, if your mama gives you something, she celebrates Christmas. If you want to take it as a Christmas gift or just take it as this is something from your mama. You know what I'm saying? We had a sister over here, I think. Sorry, I forgot my question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I asked it, but what's, what's the fine line between participating in the holiday versus being stuck? Like, where do you come from? She said, what's the fine line between participating I mean, so <laughs> it is a fine line. Most of the time we cross over real easy. Depends on if they got mac and cheese at the house. You be like, wait a minute, they gonna have mac and cheese and collard greens? I'm going over. You know what I'm saying? And then it's just, you really so like me, my mom, she stays upstairs. We stay in a duplex. Me and my family stay on the bottom. Her and my youngest sister, they stay in the top apartment, right? So Christmas time, actually this Christmas ain't really been too much because my sister, she's visiting somebody else. So it's just really my mom and all of the Muslims. You know what I'm saying? But when, you're, when you have family, so I think it's two things. If you don't have any non-Muslim family, then the people who you come in contact with, it's just like coworkers, friends, neighbors. There's probably like, if you over there pouring the eggnog, and <laughs> you're like, what am I even doing over here, right? But if you got non-Muslim, most of your intimate family members are non-Muslim, it's going to be hard for you to never show up for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So one brother, he was telling me, I go over, I tell them, don't put no pork on the plate. And when they bow their head, and when they say in the name of Jesus, I say, a stunt for Allah. <laughs> and other than that, we good. So that, I'm doing love. Some people say, I'm not even going to enter the house. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to. If some, if you can hold that line, humbly love. But for each person, they got to do with what they're comfortable with. I know like Imam Malik, for the Malikis, he has a hard line on holidays. He's like, if you cut a watermelon on a pagan holiday, it's like sacrificing a pig. That's, a, that's his line. But he lived in Medina. Why would you be doing some pagan holidays in Medina? Ain't even no pagans there. We don't live there. We live in the United States. So I, I took 
Iman Malik's statement, and I ran with it. My family still be petrified to tell me it's a birthday. They be like, don't tell Sonny out it's your birthday. I'm real mellow on birthdays now because I'm older. But back in the day, I was hardcore. You know what I'm saying? It didn't get me that much as far as like, it just kind of messed up some of the relationships I had. And then when I got older, I had to try to mend those fences. So the best way to navigate a holiday is do what you're comfortable with. Don't do anything to shirk. So if you bow your head and they say, Jesus, say a stock for Allah, or better yet, say, can I lead the prayer? Let me just lead the prayer. And then say Surah Al-Fatiha in Arabic. They going to be like, oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. We got any other questions? Yes. Oh, wait. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So my question is a little bit similar to the sir who just asked. Um, so for people who are in the Western environment who are surrounded with like Christmas movies and holiday work parties and you know just all things that are like Christmas related, right? So where do we draw the line as to what is permissible and what is allowed for us to do and what is not? I mean, so pretty much, whether it's Christmas or anything else, anything that's not allowed any other time of the year, like alcohol consumption or being around people drinking alcohol, that's something that's not allowed Islamically. So if they want to invite us to a party, but it's going to be a bunch of alcohol and drinking, and it's the job to be like, well, I can't make it. You know what I'm saying? If it's just going to be... A lot of singing and, you know, like a lot of times they'll try to say that it's not really a Christmas party, it's a holiday party. So if you want to go and just show up, spend a little bit of time and then kind of kick rocks. But if they can want you to do anything that's not lawful to do, then just don't do it. So if it's like if it's going to be if they're meeting at a bar, at plenty of times at jobs, I told people I don't meet at bars. Like we're going to meet. I can't make it to the bar because I don't go to bar. And then they'd be like, but Abdullah on the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> I say he didn't get the memo. <laughs> but anything is unlawful. So it's like if any food will be unlawful for you any other time of the year. The holidays are still unlawful. So if we, we just got to say, whatever I do the rest of the year, I'm going to do on Christmas because Christmas ain't a special day for us as Muslims. Now, if you want to fast on Christmas, there's a difference of opinion. But some of the ulama say you can fast on any non-Islamic holiday. You fast, so that's a way for you to be like, I'm not participating. But I think the main thing is, what am I supposed to do at the job? I'm at the job, it's Christmas time. We can relax a little bit. People are gonna say, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah. We just say, and you too. Whatever you wish, if you wishing good things on me, back to you. If you wishing bad things on me, back to you. Know what I'm saying? And then that's just kind of how we roll. If somebody, you know, they'll do the hidden Santa or something, what that thing is called, where they do like everybody got a pick. I always tell people I don't participate in that. And then they be like, but we need one more person for the gift. I'll be like, well, I'm not participating in it. But if they give me a gift, I'm keeping that joint. Or I remember one time, 
I got some lobster sauce. It was secret Santa, that's what it's called. So I said, okay, I'm gonna put some lobster sauce up in there. <laughs> Y'all know what lobster sauce is? I'm doing lot. It's like a spice. It's big in the Chinese restaurants. Be like, let me get the, the on the East Coast. Let me get the fried rice with the lobster sauce. You get a big old thing of lobster sauce. Don't nobody want it. Know what I'm saying? So is it really a gift? No. <laughs> I'm good now. We got, I think I seen somebody over here. So, wow, like you, Salam. So, I listened from one of the religious scholars. So, when Malay Mahal Salam came back to the Prophet Isa, so it was, it was uh, under the dead tree. And after getting uh, back to Prophet Isa, she was feeling very weak. And she, she ate dead from the dead tree. So in in Arab, so dress tree, you know, gives dress in, in summer. So, but um, Christmas is celebrated in December. So my question is, um, when and how uh, the Christmas was started in, in December? So, so he's asking, and I said a little bit about this in Juma. Right, so the whole, when you read, look at the Holy Quran and it talks about the birth of Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam. Say, okay, well, it was these dates was blooming, dates blooming in the summertime. How we get December 25th? And wallahi, December 25th is about some pagan sun god, Misra, something like that. He was born on this day, and it goes all the way up until January 1st. So the date, the original date, was a pagan holiday before they became Christian. And then they Christianized all those days. So Esther, where we get the word Easter, Esther is the god of fertility. Right? That's why when they celebrate Easter, it's about eggs, which is a sign of fertility, and bunny rabbits, which is a sign of fertility, right? One guy said Christianity is the only religion where they need mascots for the holiday. <laughs> However, because we follow the, the, the lunar calendar, we know that whatever day Jesus was born on, the late Salat was Salam, it would have been, it's going to travel. So every 33 years, it's going to end up in the same place, roughly. Every 33 years, right? So which means it flows through the whole year. So some points of the year, Jesus was born in December because whatever day he was born, it wasn't on the solar calendar, it was on the lunar calendar, just like our Ramadan days. Some months of the year, sometimes in the year, Ramadan falls in December. It's not always in December, though. So, and for most Christians, they don't really, they don't really care about all of that. Like you can tell them about the paganism, this, the, the, the Yule law. The Yule is the will for the sun. The cross and the sun and the equator, they don't care about none of that. They just want to have good time with their family, right? So we, okay, we want to have good times with our family on our days. I don't want nobody to come trying to, well, this day was this, this day was that. I ain't trying to hear all that. This is my holiday. And the problem is they sell them. One time, Abu Bakr, this is a beautiful hadith. It talks about the, the, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa in one of his most intimate spaces. So Abu Bakr came into his house, and the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa was facing the wall. 
And I, Isha, and a girl were sitting on the bed. And they were singing. And Abu Bakr, he got upset. You know how Muslim men is about music. <laughs> it's a long tradition. What you doing singing in front of the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wa salam. And the Prophet, he turned around and he said, every people have their eeds. And these are the days of our Eid. Meaning, we should celebrate it. We should be singing. We should be jovial. We should have a good time. 